And welcome to episode 14 of UFC Addicts. I'm Aaron, as always, here with my co-host, Layden, and we are here to break down UFC Fight Night something from uh, Lee versus Kevin Lee versus Ally Quinta from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, here's my co-host, Layden. What up, buddy? What's up? What's up, guys? Um, if I sound a little off, it's because I have a head cold. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the event we just witnessed. Uh, we'll start with the co-main. Uh, JJ Valentina, great fight. Uh, 25 minutes of really, really technical kickboxing. Um, I took JJ in that fight. Valentina, you know, very dominant. Um, the strength was a factor. Um, yeah, very dominant, 49-46. Uh, I actually had Valentina winning all five of those rounds. So I had no clue why JJ was uh, celebrating at the end but um yeah really good co-main what did you think of that co-main yeah um i think it went the way a lot of people kind of expected other than uh the uh quickness of the takedowns from valentina mm -hmm. um which i was happy to see honestly i think she could have kept on the feet the whole time and won uh, and appropriately had it scored 49 46 i had it 50 45 for yeah. valentina um, so I don't know, but, um, JJ just seemed to be proud of herself for being there the whole week. She just seemed to have that super positive attitude and the further into the week that got, the more uncomfortable I was with thinking that she had a chance. Um, mm -hmm. besides the odds, um, betting wise, I wasn't really, didn't have too much of a belief in JJ in that fight. And, uh, you know, after the fight was over, she wasn't, like, disappointed in her performance or anything. She thought she did great. And uh, so I just think at this point, she's not going to have a, too much of a rational view, of, and she's not too interested in that. So I'm not sure what she does from here. She's saying she'll only go down to 115 if she gets a title shot. Mm -hmm. So nothing about that performance earned her a title shot. Yeah, So I, I think she probably stays at 125. Um, she did look pretty good. For 25 minutes, you know, she looked very good, you know, and those extra yeah, 10 pounds, you know, yeah. are the big, the big, you know, those extra 10 pounds. Um, you know, she was saying coming up to the fight, she wants to go back to 115, but, you know, to just get a title shot just given to you and, you know, potentially a third loss to Rose Namanunes, you're best off really just staying at 125. Um, hopefully the UFC, like, kind of helps her out a bit and doesn't give her strong grapplers at 125 because we saw you know <coughs> Valentina really did hold her down um the one one thing that surprised me was how you know I really didn't think Valentina would shoot in the first round I thought it would be something that Valentina would uh look to do if it was kind of close but you know Valentina just imposed her will from the first round and you know strong in its MMA Exactly. It's MMA, yeah. it's not kickboxing. Mm -hmm. And just because that's where she came from, she is now a mixed martial artist. And that's what I saw when I saw in Denver against Juliana Pena when she got the mm -hmm. submission with the armbar. And ever since then, I've been she has been my favorite female fighter. And um, the takedown in the first round is another example of that for me. Yeah. Um, so I was glad to see it. She's lost enough close decisions here. She goes to where she can win the fight. And uh, I would have liked to see a finish, but JJ's tough also. So, and she, JJ did look good, and uh, I think JJ looked as good as I think she could have hoped to. But uh, at the same point, Valentin do definitely does seem to have her number. Um, yeah. And whether or not those kickboxing fights played a factor, I'm not really sure. But um, either way, yeah, Valentina looked good. And uh, yeah, how about that uh, main event? Oh, the main event, man. That was great. Um, you know, Brian Ortega obviously you know, again. took a lot I'm of I'm wrong again. Let's just get that, up. Let's get that out of the way. I'm yeah. wrong again. We agree. That moves um, And we lost, uh, we lost another main event there. But um, Brian Ortega, man, you know, he took a lot of damage. But if anyone can remember that stare after the third round, Brian Ortega was basically saying to Max, look, I know you're beating me, but... I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit by Aldo. I'm not going to quit like these other guys. You're going to have to put me out. And, you know, the heart, the heart of Brian Ortega, man, just amazing. Um, you know, it's hard to watch him get beat like that. He's one of my favorite guys. 
Um, but Max Holloway, man, you know, wow. It's going to take a lot to beat Max Holloway. Um, it's going to take a lot to beat Valentina as well. So both champions there are just legit champions. And uh, yeah, it's going to take a lot to beat those guys and girls. Yeah, um, that I, I do agree. You know, the heart and everything is very impressive. But it also makes you kind of go back and look at a lot of Ortega's career. Yeah. And uh, it makes you wonder how much of that damage you know, it's going to start to accumulate. And uh, I'll be interested to see how – I hope he takes a lot of time off from this loss. That's all mm -hmm. I can say. I hope he takes a lot – I hope he takes six months or more off. And I don't – you know, I hate to say it because I do like to see him fight. But I think he really, really has to reassess his game plan. Uh, he loses a lot of rounds in the UFC. Um, and uh, when – you're losing the types of rounds like he did against Max Holloway here. Those could do some long-term damage. So um, he can't just kind of. He does have a you know ridiculous finishing rate, but also he's got to definitely develop. You know, continue developing that striking, develop his takedowns. Uh, yes. He seemed he got a few on Max. Uh, that one double leg particular that looked really good, and I didn't see him seem to want to go back to that. And uh, his striking is about three strikes. He yeah. seems to have that left, that jab, the you know the straight, and then that uppercut, yeah. and that's about it. And yeah. so they got slower and slower by each round. And Max Holloway, you know, Diaz as as you know that looked about as most Diaz as we've seen in the last few years, being that neither Diaz fights, mm -hmm. but. Um, it just was a constant barrage, really impressive. Um, I uh, look forward to seeing Max Holloway's next fight. Um, I think he'll continue to be underestimated mm -hmm. even after this fight. I just think um, it is what it is with the type of uh, competition he's fighting. Yes, I meant to say that. Nice. So... Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, I don't know who either one of them fights next. But uh, both are legit champs, and uh, my apologies to Max Holloway for underestimating him and picking Ortega. Yeah, after um, I can't say that I because I love Brian Ortega, but I do appreciate uh, Max Holloway. He is great, and um, I think he probably moves up to 155 now, to be honest. McGregor? Uh, Holloway. Yeah, and fights McGregor. Oh, he could do. He could do. Um, you know, a lot of people spoke about that fight, but that makes real Alway sense now. Holloway deserves it, mm -hmm. and it would it would be an opportunity for. I think it's a real opportunity for one for with all due respect to Holloway for McGregor to get win. Mm -hmm. I think it's a matchup McGregor could win again for one, and for two, if he doesn't, then you launch Holloway into the casual MMA fan. Mm -hmm. um, this this got the heart. I mean. I believe the hardcore fans already respected uh, Holloway, but there was a, a lot of questions about, like, what condition Holloway was going to be in, how healthy he was, all this, you know. So I think he definitely quieted those. If he beats McGregor, the casual fan knows who Max Holloway is. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Max is def and Max has a loss to avenge, as we'll be talking about in this main event tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, sequels and you know sequels are huge in movies right now sequels are big in fights too so yeah. um, I think it just builds on a lot of these storylines so I'd love to see Holloway versus McGregor next Yeah, I think that would be great um, even Holloway also... versus uh, Ferguson would be great that would be a real yeah. fun fight anyway we could speak about Holloway all night but we've got a card yep. to break down so let's jump in let's sure. jump into the first fight and we have All right. Chris De La Rocha versus Juan Adams. And I'll let you take it away with Chris. I like how you're giving the contender, you know, Dana White contender winner uh, the respect of going second here. So uh, Chris <laughs> De La Rocha. Uh, so this guy, 39 years old. And uh, I will be referring to him as this guy quite a bit because he really looks like a this guy. Um, <laughs> five and two. He's got three TKOs and two subs, so he's a finisher. He's a 
one and two in his uh, UFC career, where he was knocked out by Daniel Amulanchuk in 48 seconds. So that's a dude is primarily a grappler, but knocked this guy out in 48 seconds. And he also lost to Adam Milstead when Adam Milstead was fighting at heavyweight, which he's fighting later on in this card at um, light heavyweight, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, then and uh, Del Rocha's only win is against uh, one of our favorite guys, uh, the Daywalker Rashad Coulter, that big fat cow, as you uh, would say. So that night, uh, Del Rocha was the better fat man. Um, and uh, Del Rocha gets in there and he throws down, and um, against anyone other than a average heavyweight, uh, he's going to struggle. And I think one average. Is above average and getting better. I liked him on the Contender Series, um, and I just overall like the look of Juan, and uh, I think he ends up getting the knockout on Del Rocha in the first, nice. even short and sweet. Nice. So okay. Juan ends with the knockout. Nice. Okay, so we have Juan Adams from your favorite show, The Contender Series. Take a shot of your apple juice. Um, four and no in his pro record. Um, we don't know much about him. Um, from what we have seen is he's a big guy, he hits very hard, uh, and his ground and pound is pretty, pretty nice. So, yeah, I'm more focused on De La Rocha just being a complete showcase for anyone who steps into the UFC. Um, his win came over Rashad Coulter, like you said. Realistically, he should have lost that night. He was rocked so many times. Uh I don't know how he won that fight. Rashad Coulter just got gassed out of nowhere. Um, they are big guys, obviously. So, yeah, but I, I agree with you. Juan Adams, um, I think he's going to knock De La Rocha out within the first. Um, yeah, it's a fun way to start the card. Um, but, yeah, Chris De La Rocha really is just shocking. So, if he can beat Juan Adams, then fair enough. But from what we've seen from Juan Adams is he hits very hard and... De La Rocha is below average. So, yeah, round one, Juan <laughs> Adams via TKO. Yeah. I think, if anything, it could go a little longer if Juan wants to kind of show off a little bit of a movement. He's a little bit of a lighter heavyweight, so he may tire mm-hmm. out the fat guy, De La Rocha. But, yeah, I got Juan all day. And also, I agree, first round. Um, <laughs> looking at the odds here, uh, minus 400 for Juan, so... He's a pretty heavy favorite to start out the card, similar to Backhitch last week against uh, Devin Clark. So, um, and which was a great did get rocked. So, Juan Adams did That's get scary. rocked. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Don Madge will always go back to Don Madge. Yep. He was, what, minus 345 or something, or plus 345 at mm-hmm. least. So, um, Del Rios is plus 325 here. So, um you know, Juan is making his debut. Del Roach is a big guy, and Del Roach hits hard. He connects. He's a big guy. He connects with anybody. He can knock him out. It's just physics. Yeah. So, um, but I'm not betting on it here, and uh, I'm picking. I'm agreeing with you. So, we're going to start with an agreement. That's so nice. That is nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see if we can change it here. Uh, okay. Zach Cummings, moving on to uh, Zach Cummings versus... Trevor Hot Sauce Smith at uh, 185. Or, uh, yeah, correct, 185? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, I will be breaking down Zach Cummings. Uh, he uh, is 21-6 and six overall with five TKOs and 11 submissions. He's 6-3 and three in the UFC. Uh, he's an Ultimate Fighter alumni. Um, and he's uh, coming off a very, very close split decision loss to... Michelle Prezeris at 170. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, no shame in that loss, really, because we saw how Michelle Prezeris is doing uh, now at 170, especially against Bartos, where he knocked him out in 48 seconds. Um, and uh, basically, Zach Cummings, he puts away guys he's supposed to, like a Nathan Coy or like an Alexander Yakolev. And... Uh, even fights with uh, a Sergio, like Sergio Ponzinibbio, um, Santiago Ponzinibbio, and he had a close decision loss. So uh, whoever he's in there with, he can hold his own. And uh, I definitely think uh, he's fighting a very similar fighter here in Hot Sauce Smith. So uh, I think they mirror each other in a lot of ways. 
And um, I think the difference will be Zach Cummings' grappling game. And I think that it, I could see this being a war and uh, Cummings ending up getting a submission win in the third, I'll say. Nice. Okay, so we have Trevor Hot Sauce Smith uh, comes into this fight 5-5 five and five inside the UFC. Um, I don't know how he's still in the UFC, I'll be honest. Uh, he's quite a strange fighter. I was actually at his last fight, which was the uh, Darren Till card in Liverpool, where he fought uh, Theodoro. Um Quite a close fight, to be honest. Um, Trevor came came on like pretty good in the third. Um, but yeah, he's he's quite disappointing, man. He hasn't really got anything he's particularly good at. Um, but I do agree with you that both guys are kind of like similar. Um, so it could be a close decision. Um, but yeah, Trevor Smith, man, I don't know how he's still here. He's just a strange fighter. Um, all five of his wins have come by a decision. So, you know, that says it all. Um, but I will agree with you. I'll take Zach Cummins. Um, but I'll take him by a decision. Um, yeah, I'll go with decision. Okay, not too much more to say about this fight. Um, minus 270 favor for Zach Cummings, uh, plus 230 for Smith. So kind of surprised it's that lopsided. But the more I look into Zach Cummings, the more I realize he is the superior fighter. And uh, I think athletically they match up pretty similar. So mm -hmm. I can understand the odds, but I'm also kind of surprised they're that wide. But I also agree with them. Hasn't... Um... So. Zach Cummins had some health issues recently. Um, not exact, not that for not maybe not that I know. Of, maybe he had some trouble making weight when he was down at uh, welterweight. Yeah, there was some guy who had like a staff infection that just wouldn't go away. I know Kevin Lee had it. It was around that time. I think it was Zach Cummins. It might not be him, but that could be why he's fighting Trevor Smith. Like, yeah, it's such a strange fight. I'm, I'm glad it's early. I really am, because this is, it's gonna be a weird one. It could, it could turn out to be like, both guys really yeah, but... challenging each other, but this is a strange fight. Yeah, well, I think, uh, I think whoever wins loses this fight should be worried about their job. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, um, we're moving on. You want to move on to the next? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, so the third fight, we have Adam Milstead versus Mike Rodriguez. And I'll be breaking down Adam. Okay, so we have Adam. He comes into this fight 1-1 one one inside the UFC. Uh, he has one no contest, which was against Curtis Blades. Um, recently, on a different podcast, I actually broke down why that was a no contest. Um, if anyone wants to see a horrible, horrible injury, go re-watch Curtis Blades versus Adam Milstead. Because Adam Milstead's knee basically pops out and it is just, it's horrible. Um, his win came over De La Rocha. So you could basically Ooh. say he's still trying to find his first win. Uh, <laughs> you know, a bit of disrespect there for De La Rocha. But, you know, he's so below average that, you know, I can't even count that as a win. Um, so, yeah, how does this fight go down for me? Um, I was at Mike Rodriguez's debut in New York. Uh, he basically got wrestled for 15 minutes. Um, I believe Adam, for him to win this fight, he's going to have to wrestle. Um, he's going to be the bigger guy in there. Uh, I think Mike Rodriguez doesn't want to lose like that again. I think Mike Rodriguez uh, has spent this time uh, practicing his takedown defense uh, and, and, and grappling. Um... It's a strange fight though, man. It could go one of either way. Like, Mike Rodriguez could connect and knock out Adam, or Adam really could just grind out another 15-minute decision. Uh, but I'm going to stick with Mike Rodriguez here. I think, you know, his debut, it was disappointing. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him this time. I'm going to take him to TKO Adam Milstead in round number two. Nice. Okay. Mike... Slow Rodriguez, that's his nickname. Um, interesting nickname, but uh, nine and three overall with seven TKOs and two submissions. So when he wins, he finishes. Uh, he's a 6'4", 205er, so he's lengthy, and he is from Dana White's Contender Series. He won on 
by uh, flying knee, so take a shot. Uh, he's 0-1 in his UFC career when he uh, where he fought Devin Clark. Uh, he got pretty much grounded out and uh, decisioned, and uh, mm-hmm. it was pretty disappointing. Uh, I really was looking forward to him and coming into his debut, and uh, he landed some good shots on Devin Clark when he could, but he just was not ready for, I thought, what was a very obvious game plan from Devin Clark, and easier said than done, but um, I've got to hope that he's uh, been working on that, and uh, I think he has, and uh, we're actually going to pretty much agree completely here. I have yeah. him finishing him by uh, TKO in the second round. Um, I think he's going to learn from that loss and uh, make the adjustments, and if he doesn't, he deserves to lose. So um, I think that Milstead will be the bigger guy, but I also think that Mike Rodriguez is still the taller guy and uh, going to utilize the his reach, and uh, he's got to utilize his movement. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think he will do that, and uh, I agree with you. Yeah. Second round. We don't yeah. only agree on uh, method. We literally agree on the whole breakdown there. That is literally what I just said. Like, that is... Wow, I'm surprised yeah. we literally agree on that 100%. That, that was one I was expecting to disagree with you on. Wow. So, uh, I, wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and it's a pretty odds? close... Uh, yeah, it's a close odds, and uh, it has it for Milstead. So they uh, are looking into, uh, I think, the Del, Del, Devin Clark uh, grind out, and they're looking for Adam to do the same thing. I think that's the safer bet in this case, but I think Mike Rodriguez has learned from that. But it's minus 170 for Milstead. Yeah. So that's an, uh, that's an underdog early in the card, a modest underdog, but an underdog I would take. Yeah, that's my um, first underdog. I, and, you, and I you're think, right, I it really could go that way. It really could go think, uh, Adam Milstead grinding out that 15 minutes, or it really could go the way we've just said. So uh, you're, yeah. you're taking a round two? Yep, I'll take round two. Nice, nice. Okay, All so right. moving on. Moving on. Two, Dan Dynamite Ige versus Jordan Griffin. And I'll let you take it away with your contender series guy. All right, spoiler alert. Uh, Jordan, the native psycho Griffin, fighting out of uh, Rufus Sport, which has a few fighters fighting tonight. Um, he's uh, 28 years old, 17-5 and five overall record with five TKOs and eight submissions, and he is a Dana White Contender Series winner, like you said, and uh, he won by rear naked choke in the first round. Um, and he had a nice range of strikes. He's a southpaw. Um, his straight left uh, caught his opponent several times. One of the times it knocked his opponent's mouthpiece completely out. Like, with, just with one straight left, looked very, you know, similar to Conor McGregor-like left. And uh, he's got just good strikes overall. Um, he had, you know, and uh, one thing I like about him is he took his time getting to the UFC. He's 17-5. and five, mm-hmm. and He's only 28 years old, so... Uh, again, 22 fights, and um, he took his time, and uh, it shows. Uh, one of the only things that I didn't like about his, particularly his contender series fight, was there was a brief moment where he left his neck out there pretty far, and a better fighter could have snatched that up and choked him out, but he uh, persevered through it, which is something I always like to see. And uh, he's got four straight submissions coming into this uh, going into his debut here, so once he hurts you, you know, goes for the finish, and uh, I just really, really look for a war here. I like Griffin uh, in this one, and I think it's going to be bloody, and I think Griffin's going to get the finish in the third round by submission. And uh, I think he's going to be a major for like major problem at 145 moving forward. This is a really good matchup, but I don't think that anybody... Uh, quite realizes, but I, I don't mean to try to hype him up. I, I'm very excited to see how he does, and uh, I think he's going to win a really good fight here against uh, Dan Inge by uh, third round at submission. Nice. Okay, so we have Dan Ige comes into this fight 1-1 one and one inside the UFC. Uh, his win came over Mike Santiago, which was a very dominant performance. Uh, Basically just back-mounted him and uh, pounded him out. Uh, his loss came to Julio Arce. 
And uh, I actually get these two guys mixed up with each other. Dan Ige and Julio Arce. I'm always getting those guys mixed up. Um, Same. Yeah, yeah, for real. You always get those guys yep. mixed up. That's man, cool, yep. it happens, man, it happens. Um, but yeah, I like this fight. I think this fight's a really cool fight. Um, both guys have good ground game. Um, both guys pretty good on the feet. Um, I think the uh, the thing in this fight is going to be consistency on the feet. I feel Dan Ige is going to be more consistent on the feet. Um, his gas tank is a little suspect from that fight against uh, Julio Arce. Um, but you know, I, I like Dan Ige, man. I like his stand-up. I like his kicks. Um, but having said that, I like Jordan Griffin just as much from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. I think this is going to be a really good fight. Um, I think it's going to be a close fight. Um, you know, if it goes to the ground, we could just see some really nice groundwork from both guys. Um, but I think I think the key in this fight is going to be the uh, consistency on the feet. I think Dan Ige is going to score more on the feet. And I feel like Jordan Griffin's going to be, you know, focused on his footwork. He looked like he had really nice footwork. Um, on the contender series um, but yeah I just think Dan Ige is going to score more so I'm going to take Dan Ige uh, via decision and a very close one and that will be our first okay. disagreement on this card very good very good and the odds are with you here uh, Ige is the minus 175 favorite oh, nice. so <laughs> that I'm perfectly fine taking the underdog here um, <laughs> I'm very comfortable with it um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I really, really think that Griffin's going to be able to keep the stand up within his range. He's going to be the taller guy. He's going to be able to um, keep him awkward being a southpaw. I think that could throw out throw off Inge. Um Yeah, I really like Griffin here. I like Griffin wherever the fight goes, and uh, I think Griffin gets the finish. So I also think the reason I may have said it was going to be a bloody fight was because. Yeah. I was thinking of Julio Arce, Arce yeah. to be honest. Yeah, so, but maybe because Arce did it, he'll do it also. Why mm -hmm. not? They're so uh, alike, man. They're so alike. Even their skill set it is the same. It's it's crazy. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really good fight, though. And uh, I just like the look of Griffin, so uh, we are going to disagree. So that's two straight underdogs for me. Uh, Griffin's a little more of an underdog at plus 155. Mm -hmm. But... It is what it is. I make my picks before I look at any odds. So Yeah, me too. Um, okay, so moving on. Uh, to yep, we're moving. Jack the Joker Hermanson versus Gerald GM3 Mershot. I know the guy, I'm just not good at saying his name. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'll break down Jack Hermanson. Okay, so he comes into this fight 4-2 and two inside the UFC. Um... Not really any notable wins. Uh, he did finish uh, Leitaz in the third round recently. Um, arguably two rounds down, uh, the Joker was. Um, most of his finishes come via ground and pound. So, you know, if you're if you're underneath him on the ground, you know, get up because you're going to get finished. Um, I really like this fight. This is another really cool fight. I think GM3, you know wins when he's not supposed to um, if that's fair to say um, I think both guys have very good ground game once again um, and this is a fun fight man uh, Jack Hermanson uh, got knocked out by Thiago Santos which is understandable that's one of his losses um, and unlucky too because he actually got knocked out in the first round 4 minutes 59 seconds and it was like a straight knockout like he got caught real clean on the feet uh, backpedaling and he was just done straight away um, but yeah this is a this is a decent fight um, it's a close fight to call again um, but I'm going to stick with Jack Hermanson on this one I feel if he can take this into the later rounds um, I think he's going to look better than GM3 I think he's going to look much better so I'll, I'll take Jack Hermanson um, I'll take him to get a ground and pound finish again and I'll take that in, yeah, I'll take that in round three. All right, all right. So I will be breaking down Jared, Gerald Mearshart 
Uh, is. He's another Rufus Sport uh, fighter here. He is uh, 28 and 9 overall, 6 TKOs, and 20 submissions. He is 4 and 1 in the UFC. He's finished all four of his opponents, three of them by submission. He uh, subbed Ryan James, uh, some guy named G- some some guy he submitted, and then Oscar Pachota in his yep. most recent. So uh, Oscar Pachota is not a bad fighter, but not great. And uh, he also TKO'd Eric Spicely uh, with a body kick, actually. Mm-hmm. So he's got some decent strikes to go with his uh, real legit uh, submission game. Um, he uh, did uh, have his. He did have a TKO loss to Tiago Santos in the second round. And uh, one thing that uh, I do like about Jared Mushar is that, again, like I was talking about with Jordan Griffin, he took his time getting to the uh, biggest promotion. Mm-hmm. And I think that's shown that I think that's a big reason why Jared Mushar is four and one. Um, you know, is that he took his time getting here, so he's ready. Uh, he's got strong striking. He's really aggressive with the submissions. And uh, this is really, I think, a really, really close matchup. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that uh, Mearshart's going to look the test from Ryan on the ground. Um, and uh, I think that he'll be smart to do so. And uh, I think that the bigger gap in the ground, there's a bigger gap in the ground between the two than on the feet with Hermanson. If Hermanson maybe has a slight advantage on the feet there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that Gerald's going to get a submission in the second round in a back and forth fight. Um, so I'm going to take Mearshard here. And, uh, so we are going to disagree again here. Second Two straight fight. Here we go. Yep. And, uh, I have Mearshard getting the finish by, uh, submission here. Uh, it's a really close fight and I'm a huge, huge Hermanson fan. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, I think probably one of the first times I'm picking against him, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, I really have been impressed by Mearshart, and uh, this is somewhat of a home fight for their whole camp, being Rufus Sport, being that it's in Milwaukee. So um, mm-hmm. I think he'll have a lot of support. I think uh, Mearshart's fought a lot in that in that state, um, and uh, I also just think that uh, he has a decent matchup here um, and knows where he needs to take the fight to win it. Um, I think he. Uh, he will be the underdog here, um, so that will be, I believe, the third straight fight I'm picking the underdog on. So, yeah. but um, I feel uh, pretty confident about my pick again. So, otherwise, right. I wouldn't be making. It, I guess so. I'll stop saying I feel confident in my pick. That goes without saying. That's why we're making our picks. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I got uh, Jared Mir- Gerald Mearshart by second round submission. Nice. And our third. Was our third disagreement overall third. on the card? Yep. Uh, and, no, it's and, the uh, second straight. Uh, so second overall? Yep, second overall. Okay, so Jack Hermanson is the favorite at minus 200. So I am picking mm. progressively more and more of an underdog here. That's yeah, not a good trend. I feel those odds are a little off. Um, yeah. I, I would say Jack Hermanson probably deserves to be a favorite, but minus 200, that's a little too much. I think it's a pick 'em. I really do. Yeah, it's, it's um, far so, closer to a pick 'em uh, odds than yeah, minus two hundred. Yeah, minus two hundred. So interesting, interesting. But uh, uh, we disagree again, and uh, we move on to Jared Flash Gordon versus what a nickname that's so original <laughs> versus Joaquin Silva. I will be breaking down the original Flash Gordon. Uh, he fights uh, Henzo Gracie's camp. Uh, he's 14 and two overall. He uh, has six TKOs and two subs in his 14 wins. Uh, he's two and one in the UFC with wins over Michelle Quinones and uh, Hakaron Diaz. So Hakaron Diaz is a decent, but pretty overall pretty disappointing featherweight since he's been in the UFC. Um, and he got TKO'd by Carlos Diego Ferreira in his last fight in the first round in two minutes. So mm-hmm. there's not too much I have to say about Gordon. He's a solid featherweight, I guess. He's uh, definitely stronger on his feet. He's got good boxing, and he's confident on the ground, but I'm not sure that um, the fight's going to be heading there anyways. And I just think overall the difference is going to be athleticism and physicality of Silva, and I think Silva's going to overwhelm Gordon. 
on his way to a decision. Um, the only question is if uh, the weight cut will be smooth enough for uh, Silva. I believe he's cutting from 55 to 45 for the first time in the UFC. But as long as that goes smooth, I think he's going to be the bigger, more athletic guy. And uh, I think those are the type of guys that uh, Gordon has trouble against. Is athletic. Nice. Oh. So nice. I'll go with uh, Silva, the Brazilian, to give him a second straight loss. Okay, so we have Silva coming into this fight 3-1 and one inside the UFC. Um, another guy where I was at his last fight, um, which was in January in North Carolina. Uh, Silva fought against... Uh, who did he fight against? Uh, Vince Pichel. Uh, really close fight. Really, really close fight. Um, I'm surprised it wasn't even a split. Uh, but really good fight. Um, every Every card... I always have one fight where I'm just, I'm kind of really back and forth. There's always one fight on every card. And I try to eliminate that. I try to just be confident in all of my picks. Um, but this is one where I'm just, you know, one day I have Silva, the next day I have Gordon. And it's completely back and forth. Um, I feel on the feet, Joaquin Silva's going to have the advantage. Um I know Jared Gordon is going to want to get this to the ground. Um, one thing made me decide my pick here. Um, if anyone can remember Joaquim Silva versus uh, uh, Madadi, this was quite. This was over a year ago. Um, it was Madadi's last fight in the UFC. Uh, that was a split win that night for Joaquim Silva, and it was only split because Madadi took Silva down so many times. He took him down a lot. And I feel when I think of Jared Gordon's wrestling credentials to uh Madadi, you know, the question's answered. I feel Jared Gordon will take down Joaquim Silva. Um I think he's gonna take him down several times if he needs to. Um and I feel that's how Jared Gordon is gonna get this uh decision win. So I'm gonna take Jared Gordon here. It's gonna be Three disagreements in a row now. Um, Lovely. So yeah, but like I said, really back and forth on this one. But um, thinking back to a particular fight for Neto B B J J. Um, yeah, I think Jared Gordon is going to be able to get this one to the mat and um, secure a decision win. Fair enough. Fair enough. So that's three straight disagreements now. And uh, one thing that is in your favor is that you've picked the favorite in all three of these. Yes. So Jared, Which did not Jared work, Gordon. Um, this uh, gone card. You know, 5 out of yeah, 13 I exactly. hit there. It wasn't good. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not at all worried about and Moving on to the next fight, we have Bobby Green versus Draca Closer. And I'll be breaking down Bobby Green. Okay, so he comes into this fight 5-3. and three. Inside the UFC. Uh, most notable wins coming over Josh Thompson. Um, and once again, in his last fight, I was at his last fight, which was in North Carolina back in January, like I just said. Um, that was against Eric Koch, and that was a war. Um, that actually got voted, uh, so far, uh, 15th best fight this year. Um, he had a no contest against Lando Venata. That was an absolute war again, and that was voted uh, 10th best fight this year. <coughs> so it's fair to say when Bobby Green actually makes it to the octagon, he has a great fight. Um, having said that, I don't think this one is going to be a great fight. I think Draca Closer is far more technical. I think he's quicker, um, and I think he's smart enough to know not to get in that kind of war with Bobby Green. Um, I think he's going to be, you know, I think he's just going to win an ugly decision. I think he's going to point fight. I think he's going to put that low calf kick out there, you know, that we see so many guys do now. Um, I just think he's going to be dominant over 15 minutes. I don't think we're going to see Draco closer come close to finishing at any point. I just think we're going to see a guy... Uh, being more active, landing more, and uh, just winning an ugly decision. So I'll take Draca closer to win a pretty ugly decision. All right, uh, I'll be breaking down Draca closer. Uh, uh, MMA lab. He's uh, nine and one with four TKOs. 
uh, coming off a win to uh, Lando Veneta. He's 3-1 and overall in his UFC career. Uh, all four of his fights have gone to decision, so I think that uh, I can understand uh, why most people are kind of picking him to go to a decision here as well. Uh, I think he's going to go in there and look to really mix it up in this matchup, and uh, I think he's going to get the finish, actually, and I think it will be uh, in the second or third round, but uh, I think it will be a TKO finish for Draco Closa, but um, we do agree with uh, Closa getting the win, but I think you could get some extra money with getting him to get the finish. I think that uh, that those odds should be pretty high because I don't think many are expecting it with Green being tough, but I think those tough wars are going to get to him. I think that uh, – it could be also likely that Closa could use a similar approach he used to Lando Venata here, but I'm just going to, you know, take a little bit of a risk and say he's going to get the finish, but I will pick Draco Closa as well. Um, and so we do finally agree again. So that's, you know, that's nice, I guess. Nice. Um, and what are the odds? And, uh, yeah, the odds are heavily in uh, Draco's, Draco's uh, favor at minus 275. So Bobby Green's a plus two thirty five underdog. Yeah, I'd, um, I'd say so. that's a little off again. To be fair. Yeah, these these seem to be a little heavy to, so far, but um, yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. So yeah, I that's have, really interesting. Those under, odds. I can under I can understand uh, betting on Green with those types of odds. Yeah, man, two seventy five. That's crazy. Yep. Yep. That's crazy. But it is what it is. He is. So, uh, moving on. We're on to, on to the next fight. Talk about weird fights, huh? Dwight Grant versus Zach Otto. No, no, no. Uh, Jessica fuck. Rose Clark versus. I, I skipped my girl. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Just, <laughs> yeah. Take it away. Take it away. Well, this is also a weird fight. Uh, Jessica Rose Clark, uh, 31 years old, uh, 9 and 5 overall with a 2 and 1 record in the UFC. She's beat. Beck Rawlings and Paige Van Zandt. So, you know, really, before losing to Jessica I. So, take that to what you mean. Uh, this girl, she's basically a scrapper. Uh, I do really like how she gets in there. Um, and she does go for it, but she's not the most technical striker. She seems to maintain a good rate and uh, be able to overwhelm uh, less, you know, technical fighters like a Beck Rawlings. But, uh, I think, again, somebody like Lee, she could have some trouble, but she also is going to be the bigger and stronger fighter, and uh, I think she needs to use that. Um, I think the key for Rose is to not give Lee any space for throughout this fight and to make Lee feel her weight as much as she can. I believe Lee's moving up for this fight. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I think she is from 115, and uh, I have Jessica actually getting the decision here. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of clinch work and a lot of uh, dirty boxing and some takedowns in the later rounds, but uh, could be a close fight. But I'm going to take Jessica Rose Clark. Nice, nice. Okay, so we have Andrea KGB Lee um, comes into this fight one and zero inside the UFC. Uh, her debut was on the um, Usman versus Maya card, so not too long ago. Um, she fought Veronica Macedo. Macedo. Um, I can remember that fight vaguely. Um, I do remember Lee um, looking to clinch quite a lot. Um, and pretty much every time she clinched, she landed knees. Um, she took uh, Veronica down a few times using the judo throw. Um, all kinds of takedowns she was using. Um, so yeah, let me just put out a real a fact Real quick, okay, so Jessica Rose Clark, I haven't predicted any of her fights right, I'll be completely honest, okay, you know, these these podcasts, you know, they're real, I'm going to be completely honest and put out a legit fact, okay, so Jessica Rose versus Beck Rollins, I got wrong, Jessica Rose versus Paige Van Zandt, I got wrong, Jessica Rose versus Jessica I, I got wrong, so the chances are, whoever I'm picking here is going to be the loser. Um, Fair enough. I don't. I don't exactly feel super confident in my pick either. Okay. I'll be honest. So you're you're about to feel less confident. <laughs> okay. So Jessica Sweet. Rose Clark, 
she's she's primarily a girl who fights at 135. Um, she's she's going to be stepping down to 125. Um, Andrea Lee did have her debut at 125. So, you know, I agree with you. Jessica Rose Clark is going to be bigger and stronger. Um, we recently saw, just literally two days ago, um, Jessica I and Chikajian. Jessica I gave Chikajian no space whatsoever. And I think Jessica Rose Clark knows that she's going to have to fight that gritty fight where, you know, she's just keeping Andrea um, on the outside. And I think she's going to be happy to clinch. I think if Lee wants to clinch, um, I think Jessica Rose Clark will be happy to clinch. Um, but yeah, I'm, we're going to agree. So I don't know if that's a good thing for you, considering oh, I've never got a Jessica Rose Clark fight right. Um, but I will agree with you. I'm going to take a scrappy decision win for uh, Jessica Rose Clark. So yeah, be even less confident now. <laughs> well, I'm. I have one thing that's definitely interesting is I'm picking a lot of underdogs on this fight. Yes, Sorry. it's called. So Jessica Rose Clark is the plus two fifteen underdog. That's so, a little off uh, again, man. That's a little off. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, it's just the odds I've got here, and then minus two fifty five for Andrea Lee. That's incredible. So, uh, yeah, I'm good. I feel, you know, I feel good enough to put a bet down on this. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, yeah. So we will see. And uh, in case you can't hear, my dog seems to agree in the background. Yeah. So he's all over that. Good odds. Yeah, Chico. Chico likes good odds, so that's good. <laughs> so uh, go ahead and move on to the next fight. Okay. So moving on to Zach Otto versus Dwight Grant. Uh, I'll be weird. breaking down Zach Otto. Yeah, this is a weird fight. Um, Zach Otto comes into this fight free and free inside the UFC. Uh, and just like Trevor Smith, Zach Otto is another guy where I don't understand why he's in the UFC still. Um, I just feel like he's just this guy who's there for people to use as like a stepping stone. Like, even Sage Northcutt. And the, the funny thing is, Zach Otto actually rocked Sage Northcutt, um, it's incredible, so, you know, Zach Otto really does have a chance with all these guys he's thrown to, like, actually prove he's not just, like, a stepping stone, um, but he is, let's be honest, uh, the guy's sure. free and free, uh, his most notable wins coming over Josh Berkman and, uh, Mike Pyle in his last fight, uh, he sent Mike Pyle off in fashion, you know, fair play, um, but yeah, this is a weird fight. Um, Zach Otto, I, it, I was surprised to find out he's actually 31 years old. You know, he's always given me that press, that impression where he's just like this 38-year-old still trying to make it. Um, right. Kind of reminds me of Tim Boach for some reason. Yeah, yeah. He's, one of the, he's that guy. He's that guy where you're just like, why are you still fighting in the UFC? How are you still here? Like, who did you pay like to just let you fight here? So, yeah, um, I'm going to take Dwight Grant. Um, he's your boy as well, Contender Series, uh, I think. Uh, and I'll take him via TKO in round number one. Yep. Uh, so, Dwight Grant, uh, 34 years old. He's 8-1 with six TKOs in those eight wins. And he is a Dana White Contender Series winner. And uh, fun fact, he's the oldest Dana White Contender Series winner. So... He had a really back and forth war on the contender series and uh KO'd his opponent clean in the second round and uh I do think he has really, really good speed and power with his strikes. And uh I took uh I look for Grant to uh push the pace against Otto and I think the pace is the key. If uh, it's a slow paced fight, I think Otto has a good chance, but the quicker the pace the better the chance and uh, I like Grant to uh win with a second round TKO. So we agree, but uh, I'll take the second round here. And so we have our second agreement in a row here. And uh, we look at the odds, and Zach Otto is the underdog at plus 250. So Grant is a minus 290 favorite. That sounds more right to me. Yeah, so... Um, Grant actually was an upset when he won on his, uh, 
episode of the Contender Series, but and he fought in the opening fight on the Contender Series. Not that that matters too much, but yeah, pretty heavy heavy favorite here, and uh, we agree. So not too much left to say. I think Otto will probably be in his last fight in the UFC here. And speaking of last fights in the UFC, we're on to the Jim Miller and Charles Dubronx fight. Um, I will be breaking down Jim Miller. He's 35 years old, and uh, he's got a 29-12 and record overall with four wins by DKL and 15 by submission. Um, and he was on a four-fight losing streak before being saved by Alex White and uh, getting that first-round rear naked choke in, the, in like two minutes back in September. Mm-hmm. So while that was a great win, I think the still, same question still remains, and it's how much does Jim Miller have left? And not, on, not only that, but how does he win this matchup? Um, I get it that he did win by Nevar back in 2010. Uh, when Charles Dubronx was probably 21 years old or so. Um, and like in our main event, a lot of things have changed since the last time these guys have fought. So um, I think that I see Miller having kind of trouble wherever the fight goes and takes place here. And I think Miller's going to get finished in the second round. Um, and I think it could be by submission and it could be by... TK, I'm not really sure, but I'll take Dubronx either way in the second. Nice. Okay, so we have Charles Dubronx Oliveira uh, comes into this fight with a record of 12 and 8 inside the UFC, which is kind of disappointing because I really like Charles Oliveira. Um, so who's he beat? He's beat guys like Darren Elkins, Jeremy Stevens, Nick Lentz, Miles Jury, Will Brooks, Clay Guida. Um, so yeah, decent wins. Um, he's actually broke the record recently in his last fight uh, for the most submissions in the UFC. He has 11 submissions. So that's 11 submissions out of his 12 wins. So, you know, if you're fighting Charles Oliveira, at least you know how you're going to get finished, which is a positive. It's Uh not really a positive because, you know, you don't really want to know you're going to be choked out. So, but yeah, at least you know. You're going to get choked out. Um, Jim Miller, his last fight. We actually predicted that win. We actually, I'm pretty sure we gave Jim Miller that win that night. Um, Which is crazy because he was like on a four fight losing streak. And, uh, you know, it goes back to what you just said. How much does Jim Miller really have left? He's done. You know, he's another guy that is done, but he is still fighting. Um, You know, every now and then he is going to get a win. You know, if your name's Alex White. Um, and we can probably predict that. Um, but here, you know, you're looking at a matchup where, you know, how can you give Jim Miller any sort of hope in this fight? You know, it's it's straight up puncher's chance. And the chances are, even if he puts his fist out there, you know, Charles Oliveira will probably bend his hand back and submit him that way. Um, you know, I just, I don't give Jim Miller any chance in this fight. Um, if you was to ask me what is my strongest pick on this whole card, this would be it. I think Charles Oliveira gets another submission. I think he stretches his record out to 12 submissions. Um, and I think he gets it done very quickly. Uh, I think it's yeah. within the first. Yeah, fair enough. And again, I mean, uh, this is the second time they're fighting. And yeah. Jim Miller does have a win in the first fight by Nevar, So he has a submission chance too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so Miller's still a really KG grappler, but also I just think, you know, he I he's as close to done as you can be, um, while still being able to beat guys. Um, and there's no shame in that; it comes for everybody. Um, oh, Oliver is a minus 300 favorite, um, and plus 250 for Jim Miller. So I'd say that's about spot on. Yeah, and what was that? Um, didn't Jim Miller have like a like a disease or an illness he's been fighting. Lyme disease, I think. But yeah, maybe I'm, that's it. That was it. I believe Lyme disease, which, you know, just adds to it. He's 35 years old. He's got 41 fights. I mean, there's no shame. Yeah. Even Body's getting in got... the cage, you know, fighting that is a is a win for Jim Miller. But it's hard to give him a win here. It's very yeah, if he, wins the, if he wins this fair play, though. But... Um... I don't see that coming. So, um, 
on to the next fight here, which we've got at 135 between Rob Font and Sergio Pettis. I will be breaking down Rob Font out of uh, Team Sit Yondong, uh, out of Boston, Mass. Uh, 15 and 4 overall record. He's 5 and 3 in the UFC. Um, he's got wins over Douglas Silva de Andrade and Thomas Almeida and losses to Pedro Munoz by guillotine and Rafael Asuncio, uh in a back-and-forth uh, fight by decision. So no shame in losing a decision to Asuncio. Lots of fighters have, including the current champ at 135. Um, Font is a tricky fighter and uh, definitely goes uh, for the finish in there when he does win. He uses a variety of kicks and knees, uh, good punches. He's got good kickboxing and Muay Thai. Um, and he has a lot of ability with his subs. He just hasn't shown it too much, but I think he's got a variety of chokes he can offer. And, uh, I think this is an interesting matchup and a uh, tough matchup in the move up for Pettis to Bantamweight. Um, Font will be the taller guy and the bigger guy, but I imagine that could play an advantage for Pettis in his striking style. Um, also, as long as he's the, uses his speed and his movement to stay in and out with his karate. So, um, yeah, this is a close fight for me. Um, really is. I'm going to take Rob Font and I'm going to take him actually to get the finish in the second. Um, I just, uh, I'm not sure how much Pettis' chin will hold up moving up and wait here. So we'll see, but I'll take Font for a second round TKO. Nice. Okay, so we have Sergio Pettis comes into this fight 8-4 inside the UFC. Um, I don't know why he's fighting again. Uh, this will be the third time he's fought, he's fought this year. Uh, he fought like eight weeks ago against uh, Formiga. Um, the only reason I, th- I think he's fighting again is because, you know, that loss was... It was disappointing the way he lost. You know, when you have a guy just sitting on your back for four minutes and you just kind of stood there like, well, what am I supposed to do? You know, it it was kind of embarrassing. He didn't take no damage, clearly. So that's why he's fighting again in, like, eight weeks since he last fought. Um, but, yeah, this is this is a really good fight. I like this fight. Um, Sergio Pettis, notable wins coming over Joseph B. Uh, Brandon Moreno, John Moraga. Uh, his losses coming to Caceres, uh, Ryan Babyface, uh, Henry Cajudo, and... Uh, Literally eight weeks ago, he lost to Formiga. Um, you know, I don't even know why he's moving up as well. It must it must be because the 125 division is, you know, gone. So, yeah, I don't know why he's fighting again so quickly. Uh, this is a dangerous fight. Um, I think huh? Rob Fonts looked very good, um, especially against Almeida. He looked very good. Um, even against a Sun Cell. You know, it's not like he got beat uh, technically over 15 minutes. You know, he was he definitely held his own in that fight. Um, but yeah, I just I don't get this move from Sergio Pettis. Um, I think you know, just enjoy Christmas. You know, just enjoy Christmas and come back sometime in 2019 if you want to move up. But moving up this quick, you know, it it doesn't even seem like he's he's planned he's planned this properly. It just seems like, no. you know... This is not a good matchup. Yeah, it just seems like that loss has annoyed him. And he just wants to get back in there. Oh, let's just do it again before the, the year's up. So, uh, yeah, we completely agree. Uh, I'm going to take Rob Font via TKO <laughs> in round number two. Okay. <clears throat> in the odds, uh, I do have it for Rob Font at uh, minus 165. So, modest favorite. And... Uh, plus 145 for Pettis, so I think those are pretty spot-on odds. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Rufus Sport, again, is in Wisconsin, so we're in Milwaukee, so this fight's in Milwaukee, but I don't think that's enough of a reason to rush it either. So mm-hmm. we'll see. I think it's a really good fight, but this is a tough fight to rush yourself up for, so yeah. we'll see. And uh, we are on to the co-main event. you want to go ahead and lead us off? Yes. And, uh, okay, so us... we have... Edson Junior Barboza versus Dan the Hangman Hooker. Uh, I'll be breaking down Dan Hooker. Okay, so he comes into this fight 7-3 and three inside the UFC. 
uh, previously fighting at 145, where he went 3-3. Three and three. Uh, Since then, moved up to 155, and he's had four straight wins. Uh, not only four straight wins, but four finishes. And if you go back and watch those four fights, the finishes just get more impressive each win. Um, you know, the last one against Gilbert Burns, man, that was just... It was vicious. And then you think about the win over Jim Miller. Vicious. And then you you think about the choke on uh, Dear Kesey. And, you know, the guy has looked very good at 155. Um, yep. This is obviously his biggest test at 155. Um, Edson Barboza, I believe he's lost two in a row now. Um, so he's looking to get back in there. Um, this is a really, really good co-main event. Uh, I like this fight just as much as I like the main event. Probably, I probably like this even a little bit more. Um, this is going to be a violent fight. Uh, Dan Hooker, you know, I wonder how he's going to go about this fight. I just think if, if he's seen how Edson Barboza has lost those last two fights, I think, you know, Dan Hooker is smart enough to even say, you know what, I'm going to wrestle you. I've seen how... You know, you, he looks like a fish out of water, Edson Barboza, when he's on the mat. He looks like he hasn't got a clue. So Dan Hooker really could just turn into that kind of guy. Just for one fight, just, you know, I need to get past you, I'm going to turn into a wrestler. Um, having said that, Dan Hooker, you know, has looked so good on the feet. He really can just keep it there and find a way to beat Edson Barboza. Um, having said that, now we look at Edson Barboza and we look at his kicking game. We look at how dangerous he is on the feet. You know, I, I believe he's the only guy to get finishes um, with the legs like down below to the body and to the head. So his kicking game is that good. Uh, mm -hmm. Such a tough uh, pick for me. But I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with Edson Barboza. Um, you know, I basically just broke down how both guys can really win. Um, Dan Hooker really could turn into a wrestler. Dan Hooker really could just prove how how vicious he is. Uh, but, you know, we know how good Edson Barboza is as well. Uh, so I'll take Edson Barboza to win a very close decision. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I'll be breaking down Edson Barboza. He's now uh, 32 years old out of American Top Team. 19-6 and six overall with 11 TKOs and 19 wins. He is coming off two uh, two fight losing streak to Kevin Lee and Khabib. Um, while Khabib laid out the blueprint, blueprint, Kevin all but executed it better besides a brief chicken dance from the spinning heel kick. Um, mm -hmm. But Kevin fought through that adversity, which is a requirement in the MMA game, and uh, he uh, came out close to winning that round. He was rocked in. And uh, but Barboza can strike with the best of them, and I'm really curious to see the odds here because I think that Barboza, I have a feeling, is going to be being massively doubted here, and uh, I think that could be a mistake. I think this is a really good matchup for Edson to be able to display his skills um, and not have to wrestle. Uh, I think if Hooker was wise, he would not wait to see if he has to wrestle, but he would wrestle immediately mm -hmm. or pretty pretty close to immediately. Mm -hmm. Um that being said, I um, do think Hooker could hold his own, and uh, I just think that it comes down to how hungry if you know how hungry is Barboza still. Even if he wins this fight, I think what could be in the back of his mind is, I win this fight, I'm going to fight a guy like a Kevin Lee again. Mm -hmm. I got to fight one like so. I don't know how much confidence he has, and. He's got a body for kickboxing, not for wrestling. And that's why when he gets wrestled, he looks like a fish out of water. He get, his body gets zapped very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually have been talking about both sides of my mouth for this breakdown, but I have Hooker with a third-round TKO. I think he's going to it's gonna come down to the hunger of Hooker compared to the hunger of Barboza. Nice. And uh, Hooker's on the rise here, and it's going to be his fifth straight finish in uh, third round. And uh, I don't know if Edson Barboza fights too much more in the UFC at the top of the line because I think, uh, like, uh, Dos Anjos and some of these other guys, they've been figured out on how to beat him. Yeah, nice. And what are the, uh, what are the odds uh, saying for this? Yeah, it's a, this is a straight pick -em. So I was totally wrong on the odds doubting him. It's uh, minus 115 for Hooker, one, one, minus 105 for Barboza. Wow. That, you know, 
when when you tell me those odds, they really are legit. You know, this could go either way. Dan Hooker yeah, really could show us. Look, I am this vicious guy at 155. Or I'm Ed glad to see the odds are like that. Yeah, Eds and Barboza really could put on that masterclass and show. You know, look, I'm still here. It just takes a wrestler to show. You know, I'm not here. But uh, yeah, really good fight. Okay, so moving on to the main event. We have Kevin, the Motown Phenom, Lee versus Al La Quinta. And I'll be breaking down Al La Quinta. Okay, so he comes into this main event rematch uh, with a record of 8-3 and three inside the UFC. Uh, notable wins coming over uh, Kevin Lee, uh, Ross Pearson, Joe Lauzon, uh, Jorge Masvidal, uh, Diego Sanchez. Uh, his losses come into Mike Chiesa, uh, Mitch Clark which is embarrassing, um, and he most recently lost to Habib. Um, so, yeah, what what can we say about this rematch? Um, you know, so they fought five years ago, Kevin Lee, 21 years old. Um, if anyone wants to watch that fight, just hit YouTube. Um, Kevin Lee, you know, his wrestling looked very good in that fight. Um, you know, it was, it was a close fight, and that was five years ago. Uh, since then... We've had one guy go on to massively improve every aspect of his game, and that's Kevin Lee. Um, if he looked good five years ago against Al, um, we need to see this now, because Kevin Lee has massively improved. Um, one thing I will say is Kevin Lee, he does get caught. He has been knocked out since then. Um, he has been caught a few times since then, even after mauling Barboza for 13 minutes he was caught and he done an unbelievable chicken dance off of that um having said that when it's going good for kevin lee it's going very good you know he even had tony ferguson mounted at times um you know mauled uh barboza um you know when it's going good for him it's very good you know ch- uh, choked out mike chiesa in style you know with that controversy um, so what what can we say? You know, Al La Quenta, he's a he's a good wrestler as well. Um, he went toe to toe with Habib for 25 minutes and held his own. But if you look at the photo of Al La Quenta after that fight, you know, for anyone saying that Al La Quenta like, you know, came close or exposed Habib, you know, just take a look at Al La Quenta's face after that fight. Um, I agree. Yeah. So this is. It's a good rematch. This is a good rematch. You know, it's a good chance for Kevin Lee to overturn a loss, his debut loss. It's a good chance. Um, and you know, Kevin Lee, man, he's he's just he just looks so impressive. Like every fight he he gets into, he's just looking better and better. And uh, I think Al Quenta's just, you know, he's spending most of his time on the sideline, kind of going on these. Uh, these interviews and kind of moaning and tweeting and just complaining a lot, you know, saying how he he does real estate and he's he's got so much more opportunity outside the UFC. And so yeah, you know, I think Kevin Lee's mindset is far better. I think his wrestling now is far better. Well, not far better, but better. Um, and yeah, I just think this is a very good rematch. Uh, I think Al La Quenta can catch Kevin Lee. Um, having said that, I think Kevin Lee will take Al Quenta down within 30 seconds and uh, start the mauling process. So uh, I'm actually going to give Kevin Lee a round one finish in this one. I'm going to give him a ground and pound finish in round one. Nice, nice. I will be breaking down my boy Kevin the Motown Phenom Lee. He is 17-3 and three overall with two TKOs and eight submissions in his 17 wins. And uh, like you said, this kid has continued to improve from his UFC debut at 21 when he lost to Ally Quinto, where in that fight, mind you, he had a very close rear naked choke, I believe in the third round, where he just needed to switch up the grip, and I think he would have had it. But um, anyways, since that fight, he definitely has improved. And like you said, he has lost by... TKO since that fight and by submission each um, and I think both of those fights are going to be huge huge fights from in very different ways that TKO he got caught by a BJJ guy on a hardly a jab it was a very you know it just hit him in the right spot though and put him out and uh, 
I think since that fight, he is constantly going to be aware that any strike can put you out. And I don't think that's a bad thing for a young fighter to realize. Mm -hmm. Um, Since that fight, he has not been put out. Yeah, he got absolutely rocked by that spinning that spinning head kick but from Barboza, but he ended up persevering and winning and putting away Barboza. So, you know, again, he goes through perseverance, you know, goes through punishment. Um, he's got a legit rear naked choke. He's put away a lot of good fighters, including Trinaldo with it and Chiesa with it. Um, and I think that's what he's going to do here in this matchup. I think he's going to be on the hunt for that rear naked choke that got away from him the first time. And, uh, I think he'll make a, he's here to make a point and, uh, he's going to get the finish in the third round. I think he's going to, I think he says in a lot of interviews in his style, he likes to kind of put on a punishment before he puts him away. And, uh, I think that's what he's going to do against Iaquinta, uh, who I, well, you corrected yourself when you say he's a lot better of a wrestler. I'll say it. I, Kevin Lee is a way better wrestler than okay. how I went back. So um, you're going to see it here. And uh, I think Kevin Lee is going to absolutely put up a statement. And uh, he is a guy to watch at 155 or that 165 division if it opens. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to this fight. And uh, Kevin Lee is the minus 300 favorite. So um, hmm. I, uh, I think it's a little I can understand. Just a little. Okay. Okay. I am okay with those odds. Um, yeah. I think he's gotten so much better since that fight, and I don't know if Ali Quint has gotten that much better, if at all. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, those for, odds. Hey, props for taking Khabib on one day notice, but yeah. you still lost, and uh, Khabib had a reason not to unleash his whole two kid on Ali Quinta. Mm-hmm. And what were those odds? They were minus 300, did you say? Minus 300 and plus 255. Yeah, I mean, I understand why he's a, he's a decent favorite, but when we look at the times Kevin Lee has been caught, you know, it's worrying. So, you know, minus 300 is a little too much for me, but yeah, you know, Kevin Lee, you know, if you want to stick him in, in a parlay, it's definitely worth it. You know, Kevin Lee has massively improved every fight and... Yeah, we both agree on the main event again, which is probably not a good thing, but, you know, the time no, has to No, not good for you. It's not... Yeah, I have to get one right at some point. I don't know what the last main event I got right was. Yeah, it was, it was quite a few main events ago, bro. Yeah, but uh, anyways, I think that this could be my fight of the night. Uh, there's so many fights on this card that could be fight of the night. I'm not going to bother picking one, though. I'm very excited for this card, and... Uh, Definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing how Kevin does here. If Kevin can win this fight, he's uh, definitely in title contention again. So, yeah, um, I will pick a fight yeah. of the night, though. I will. I'm going to say the co-main. I think the co-main is going to be a very, very nice fight. I think both guys okay. just, you know, they're, they're there to win. You know, you, you said uh, Barboza's mindset and that. Um, I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong. I think he's going to be there. Uh, on his kicking game again and uh, if Dan Hooker's smart you know we're going to see him wrestle and if if he does I would not be surprised but uh, yeah I'll take that as my fight of the night cool cool well uh, yeah I'm looking forward to this card this is the second last card of the year so we are off next week unfortunately for that Christmas holiday I guess they're not going to give us a card yeah whatever Um, (laughs) but uh We'll be back the following week with uh, the final fight card of the year, which is uh, some guy named John Jones. Um, who's that so we'll have, to do our re- we'll have to do our research on who that guy is. Yeah. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen him fight this year or last year, so we'll have to dig deep into who this John Jones is. So uh, tune into next episode, John Jones, Gustafson 2, and uh, Cyborg Nunez, Nunez, as well as uh, the rest of the card. So. Uh, looking forward to the fights this weekend, and uh, we uh, we uh, will see you then. Uh, I have nothing else to say, so peace out. Peace out. Um, just before I sign off, uh, I appreciate everyone subscribing. Uh, I appreciate uh, all the comments and likes, and uh, yeah, we'll be back for the uh, last card of the year. And um, as always, you know, leave your uh, predictions in the comments and. Um, Check the description for uh, running scores and main event scores and all of that. Um, 
yeah, last week the betting wasn't great. Uh, I feel this week we're going to hit some bets. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the uh, like 20th of December for uh, another card. Peace. Yep. Appreciate all the comments. Peace out, guys.